وقل جاء الحق وزهق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم My dear brothers and sisters in humanity peace be upon you and my dear brothers and sisters in Islam salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Today's topic is the death of Lazarus as you can see um you guys all know that the death of Lazarus is mentioned in two gospels the first is the gospel of Luke which is a synoptic gospel and the gospel of John so why am i telling you this is only to show you the difference what John says and what Luke says so where we here we're in John so i'll show you where i'm getting my um, my information so it's the bible gateway the gospel of John and the chapter 11 so you guys are familiar with that if not you can just either google this or get your um, your bible you have the book go through it so John tells us about Lazarus who was sick he is from Bethany which is a, the village of Mary and her sister Martha and he tells us the story of Mary yeah, that she is the one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair the Lord here he is talking about Jesus of course okay so story goes on you can read for yourself I will scroll down to here so on his arrival Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days yeah read I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna let you read okay I'm gonna let you read and scroll here so she Martha here is saying if you had been here my brother would not have died yeah all right so we know for sure that he's dead and uh, he's been dead for four days okay and then you start talking about all that so is the Messiah the Son of God who has come to into the world hmm okay so now Mary comes into the scene asks about Jesus and all that now read carefully read for yourself okay I'm not going to be reading but I want us to get somewhere all right so I wanted you to get to this so Jesus is moved uh, deeply moved though when he was told he stayed other two days that's fine he wanted this man to die and he wanted to bring him back to life for the okay so take away the stone he has been there for four days fine and Jesus said, did I not tell you? If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Of course, the glory of God in here is Lazarus coming back to life. Now, what is Jesus doing? Jesus did not go straight and say, oh, uh, Lazarus, come out. 
he did not okay he did not so Jesus in here did something said something before saying Lazarus come out what is that Jesus is talking to God okay Father, I thank you. Oh, you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I say this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. You see, the, the main actor in here is not Jesus. It is God, whom Jesus calls Father. Okay? And when we say father, it's not the biological son. It's just that this is the way of like the Jews would say son of God means a pious man or man of God. And father is everyone's everyone's father. God is everyone's father. But anyway, we'll just leave that at that. But he is saying that they may believe that you sent me. So he was sent as a messenger or as a representative okay so then he calls and the dead man came out okay right now I want you to think a little bit just a little bit we all say that nobody came back or nobody came back from death and told us what's happening in there. Wasn't this the perfect opportunity for the people of the time to ask? Like the, um, the Sadducees, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, wouldn't we? Why would they start looking to kill Jesus instead of calling Lazarus and ask him what he saw? Because after all, he was dead for four days. So he must have seen a lot. How come we don't hear what Lazarus said? Nothing. Nothing. All we see, all just that John is doing here, He's only showing us that Jesus brought back this dead man to life and then the Pharisees wanted to kill him. That's it. And that's it. It's a little bit um, weird. I find it weird. Okay? Why? Why is it nobody asking Lazarus what did he see there? How come Lazarus doesn't have a gospel? Because nobody would be a better storyteller than Lazarus. Instead of John and Luke and Mark and Matthew and I don't know who. Lazarus is the best to actually tell us the story to tell us um, what he saw instead you find John in here saying something and let's go now to Luke yeah where are we getting this from of course again the same place Gospel of Luke chapter 16 okay but in here in Luke it's a different story don't take my word for it, listen to it, or read it yourself, okay? Or either Google it, or bring out your book, I mean the Bible. So it talks about the rich man, it talks about Lazarus, okay? But it doesn't talk about death or anything, okay? So we, I just scrolled down while I had it paused. So you can just scroll down. Okay, I'll show you 
we're, we're in the same chapter. So you just go down here. Yeah. Mm, so the rich man and the beggar named Lazarus. Make no mistake, it's the same person. It's the same Lazarus in here as in John in here. Okay, remember this. This is John chapter 11. Take you back up again. The death of Lazarus. It's exactly the same person we're talking about. However, you read here, you'll find a different story. And Lazarus died and was not resurrected. I don't know why Luke did not bring what John brought. Did not tell us what John is telling us. Okay. So anyway. So Lazarus, sick, hungry, sitting there next to the rich man's house. Nothing happened. The rich man does not help. So what happened to Lazarus? Of course, he died. Okay. Now the angels take him where? Next to Abraham. Okay, to Abraham's side. But when the rich man died, he goes to where? Hades. Okay. So... The rich man looks up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. Okay. And then comes now there is a there is a conversation between the rich man and Abraham. So the rich man is in a fire and he wants a drop of water. But anyway, this is not my story, but I just wanted um I wanted to show you that Luke did not mention anything. He didn't talk about Mary and Martha. He did not talk about Jesus. He did not talk about the resurrection of Lazarus. So, what is going on here? Hmm? I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I really don't get it. So, coming back to John okay uh, we're in John chapter 11 the death of Lazarus there's something that I wanted to draw your attention to is this so now Martha is talking to Jesus and she's saying if you were here of course my, my brother wouldn't have died but this is important. I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. You see, Martha, though she knows that he is the Messiah, okay, okay, she knows that he is the Messiah. She even called him the Son of God. But she still makes a difference between God and you. You, who is you here? It's of course Jesus. So what is she saying? But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Okay? So she and everyone who was there knew that Jesus wasn't God and that he was someone else. Okay, fine, he was the Messiah. He was a person who was pious. That's what the Jews would, would say. So, but they still made the distinction between God and Jesus and they never regarded him as God so um, following the um, 
the story of Lazarus, um, at some stage we saw that Mary or Martha says to Jesus that you are the son of God. Some people will say that that is proof that he is God. I just want to show them that the Bible says elsewhere that here as you can see and where are we getting that from? Book of Acts chapter 17 verse 28 so for in him we live and move and have our being as some of you own poet said have said we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring. So, this is one example. And let's go to Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 2. Um, in here, is, you all know it's David speaking. So, I will progr proclaim the Lord's decree, he said to me, you are my son, today I have become your father. Now, is David the son of God, begotten or something? No, of course not. But the word son just means pious, it means uh, affiliated, related. Okay? So, um... Let's check others. Here is a very good one. Um, it's this here. Where are we getting it from? This is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 12. Read. Yet to all who did receive him, talking about Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or husband's will, but born of God. You see, all you need to do is just to believe or receive him. Just the belief actually makes you son of God. Alright? Let's examine other um, Verses where the Bible talks about the Son of God. So Psalm 2 7. We've already seen that. Yep. Um, Son. Proverb. Mm. What is his name or his son's name? That is son. This is used by Christians to actually tell you that the Lord Himself will give you a sign. The Virgin. You all know the, the difference between uh, Alma and Betula. So, yeah, sons. Mm. Hosea. When Israel was a youth, I loved him, and out of Egypt I called my son. So, Israel, the Israelites, when they were in, uh, in Egypt, they were called the son, the sons or the children of God. Hmm. Another example here, Genesis chapter 6 verse 4, talks about the Nephilims. When the sons of God went to the daughters of humans, so these sons, what do we do with them? Are they not God? Are they gods? Is Jesus one of them? Is Jesus not one of them? What is it? Romans 
chapter 8, verse 14. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. Luke chapter 3, verse 38, you know, in talking about the lineage. So it goes on and on and on. Son of Adam, the son of God. So Adam was the son of God. Why is he not considered as God? Mm, I don't know. Mm. This one is very good. Matthew chapter 5. Verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Philippians chapter 2 verse 15, hmm. Children of God. Romans, children of God. All right. So, with this, my dear brothers and sisters, sons of God in Wikipedia, you can read yourself. In Judaism, sons of God usually refers to the righteous ones. Okay, you can go through and read, it used to be called Bani Elohim or Bani Ha Elohim, the children of of God or the sons of God right um, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh my dear brothers and sisters in humanity salam alaikum that is peace be upon you wishing you a peaceful life um, although I wish to urge you to accept Islam consider Islam for yourself if you have any questions ask um, but please don't uh, listen to the haters and scaremongers. That's it. Assalamu alaikum.